time it's uh january 26 2021 tom eagle hop your morning mayor shame and tom and half man half amazing on the line with me and we're going to be talking about some interesting stuff today but uh before we do that of course we've got to let you know that uh, we're here every tuesday and thursday and we'll take on a business topic every day to help your smaller home-based business or your startup business succeed and our political shows are on uh, radio on Saturday, 8 to 11 Mountain Time. Click listen now over at KMMSAM.com. And you can uh, please share that with your friends as well. And if you missed any of our past shows, of course, they're all at KMMSAM.com. Just click on Tom and Shane's podcast. And uh, please uh, feel free to share that with your friends. And if you're watching us uh, on uh, YouTube, of course, well, hey, subscribe, hit that little notification bell and like us. And uh, we're also on Patreon. Uh, if you would like to support the show monetarily, we would appreciate that very much to offset some of the costs of putting this on uh, twice a week. And uh, just go over there and uh, we'll have the description uh, or the link in the description below. So uh, by all means, uh, we can uh, we can do that. So, um, how you doing, Shane? Yeah. All right. Hang on. I can't hear you, and I'm not sure why. Uh, Everybody knows that if you fall over a sawhorse, you have to keep uh, you have to get up and keep sawing. And one of the principles of the show is to provide people with an opportunity to understand small business. But more importantly, not to make the mistakes that people do make. So anytime anyone can give you advice that prevents you from having to learn from your mistakes and gives you a hand up to move quickly into a field that's new to you and reduce your anxiety and stress about doing so and the decisions you're going to have to make on your own, that's a good thing. So we're here to be a good thing in your life and help you uh, work to live. All right. Um uh since uh, you were late getting here, we didn't get to go over the process we're going to do today. <laughs> so have you got the questions, the interview you questions? Know, you don't really have to start the program this way. Of course I do. I'm already prepared. I've read all the material. Okay, so let's good. Go on and let's not waste any time because time is money. Okay. I'm going to do the middle row. You're going to do the left row. That's quite fine. What he's talking about, the middle row mm -hmm. is uh, the question and what you can't ask and the far right question that or fight far right role he's speaking to is what's illegal and you can't so we'll right. go through this as quickly as we can to make it easy for everyone that's watching mm -hmm. all right uh the first thing we've got to start with though is that what we're dealing with here is the fair credit reporting act of 1970 and the consumer credit reporting reform act of 1996 and what that means is that uh, laws were passed on those two uh, uh, acts that allow you or don't allow you to ask certain things of uh, employees that you're going to uh, that you're going to interview and hire, because if you ask the wrong questions or whatever, uh, they could uh, bring an action against you, and even if you win that action, uh, it can certainly cost you. Uh, some money, the cost of an attorney, the cost of time away from your business, all sorts of things. So uh, it's very important that if you're going to start hiring employees that you know what you're doing when you uh, when you um, when you do that. So uh, the other thing that we need to do that will offset a lot of this problem is to create a detailed job description. In other words, spell out in the job description when you advertise the job what it entails do you have to uh, drive for example do you have to have a clean driving record is there going to be a drug test can you lift 50 pounds um you know i mean there's any number of things uh, that can be in there that um, detail what the job entails uh so that uh, so that the people who apply are wasting your time and can't do the things that you need them to do for the job. So uh, that's uh, a job description is extremely uh, important to, uh, to do. So just keep, uh, 
keep that in mind. We'll cover some of those things as we as we go along. So the uh, first thing we're going to talk about is um, uh, address. Uh, things you can't ask. Do you own your own home or do you rent? Who do you live with? How are you related to the people you live with? Those are some of the things that uh, you cannot ask. That's correct. <clears throat> so keep in mind as we go through this, the importance of a home um, human resources, which is something that's new. It's, it came about in the late 80s because of the laws that Tom pointed out. And so you want to catalog this in a nice uh, bound uh, um, portfolio and make it, uh, you know, uh, where it has the guidelines or even maybe some of the rules or legislation that exists both statewide and federally in it. So your employees been informed that you know and understand it. And then, of course, you have the provisions or the in information that you're doing. And um, you may do a written question you know, error at the end. And, uh, you know, these, again, are the questions that you should or should not um, ask and the reason why. In, the, uh, in regard to address, uh, uh, you cannot ask as to someone's ownership of a home or, or whether they rent. And uh, you, you, uh, you can't inquire about who they live with and uh, how you are re related to any of the people that you live with. Th these are all viewed as very circumstant to, to racial profiling as an individual and uh, not allowed by law. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, other things you can't ask about, uh, let's talk a little bit about age because uh, age is a big deal. You can't ask uh, what year you were born, uh, when did you graduate high school, uh, age discrimination only pertains to adults over the age of 40, but uh, there are exceptions for employers with less than 20 full-time employees. You would need to check on that uh, in your state. So, uh, but age could be, um, uh, there are instances, and Shane will tell you when uh, you can ask about age. That's right. Um, you're not, you're not uh, allowed to ask directly um, what year were you born in or uh, when did you graduate uh, from high school? Uh, those are considered personal. That's considered personal information. Although in most uh, people's resumes that they will provide for work, they, they will provide their education. Um, but they won't, of course, necessarily provide their age unless in the case of service industry work that in, involves um, age groups of like bars where you have to be of age to ser serve food or liquor rather. And so yeah, there, there may be other examples where, you know, an age requirement for the job is uh, is important and uh, you have you have a right then to inquire about that. So uh, the importance of all of this, again, is that uh, you have a HR, you know, uh, binder for the employee uh, and it, you know, w which will, would include the resume they have. Because uh, because you'd want to keep a copy of that for your your own records and in the case of what we're discussing your own protection. Yeah, um, Shane, are there are there uh, particular things in Canada you can ask about? Have we uh, can you ask about address, uh, address age, uh, where you live, do you rent or own, things like that? Are those against the law in Canada we, too? We, we, follow, we follow similar guidelines. So what so far it's the same in Canada. We haven't okay. Do you think there isn't anything that's uh, not different here? Yeah. All right. Next one's kind of unusual. <laughs> Can't ask about arrests and uh, or their arrest record. Avoid any questions relating to arrests if not directly related to the job or in states where it is illegal to ask. Uh, uh, they've not been convicted yet, so they could be innocent. So um, We'll, we'll talk more about that down the uh, line here, but uh, also rejecting applicants based on arrest uh, could be racial profiling also. So Shane, what can you ask? Uh, well, in Canada, you are required if you've, if you've served time and been convicted that you have to, uh, on a resume or a uh, job application, you, you have to inform the uh, employer that, that that's the case. Uh, in some cases, uh, in the states of the United States, um, if you're out on parole and you have a parole officer, um, you, you know, you are required to report that because the parole officer may show up at work at, you know, to inquire if you're working. So you, it better, you be better. You tell your employer than find out from a parole officer. Uh, you've heard stories and seen TV shows about 
<clears throat> parole officers, you know, that set people up with jobs. So in these cases, uh, the employer finds out already. Um, mm -hmm. But you must avoid any questions directly um, as to any arrest, and, you know, unless it's uh, directly relative to the job that's being done. Like if you're being asked to be a security guard or an armored car driver, of course, right. they want, want a, you know, a legal background check. Again, uh, this would be on your resume or again, on your resume, you would inquire or provide information of military or police involvement in your life um, or employment. So to enhance, you know, your qualification for the job. Absolutely. Um, other things, uh, availability. Uh, these are things that uh, um, what you would do um, and you would spell out, spell this out in the job description as well. Uh, if there's weekend work, if it's uh, if you're open 24 hours, if there's going to be overnight work, all of that should be spelled out in the uh, description of the job. Um, in the case of uh, working on uh, weekends or Sundays or things like that can be religious uh, observance questions. Um, uh, Child care, things like that can impact females who are uh, working for you. And uh, but some of these can be seen as racially uh, discriminatory unless it's uh, a, a requirement of the job. So ask all que uh, candidates the same question on the subject, asking only women about evening work can be discriminatory, uh, discriminatory as it um, ties into questions about family status. So that's right. So this is a tricky one because availability, of course, is always set to. Uh, in regards to particularly single mothers, which of course you really can't inquire about. But uh, if someone is already employed and they're looking for a second job, that's really none of your uh, business. So I, if, if the employee or potential employee wishes to disclose that to you, of course they can. Um, but th they have a right to de determine that they want a specific um, timeline of work and that, you know, they could tell you that their availability is only for that time. So that that's that basically covers this. So this whole thing, mm -hmm. um, the, the problem that you have, uh, Tom pointed out, is that the proxy questions you can't add like about religion, uh, you know, does you know, because if you if you go to church, then you, you go to church or you're involved in church um, um, it, things that are issues or. Sunday issues for, to work at church and help people. You, you know, that, that is not something that they can make a determination to hire you for or not. And, and about, again, about evening work, you know, that's a, that's another proxy question implies, you know, whether you have a family or not or children or childcare, again, not a good thing to ask about. Um, and just generally, particularly women that are single becomes a big issue. So you don't want to go there with regards to children and or child care. Um, what, once a person's employed, though, there's there's nothing wrong with these things coming out um, with, you know, by the employee to inform you that they have issues, you know, about eight. Like if uh, uh, you're approached uh, because you work at a place and the manager asks you to switch a uh, a shift or, you know, cover for someone or another employee asks you to cover for them. Um, you know, you, you may be inclined to disclose why you can't. And, and so it's not, they don't take it personal, you know, everybody has a personal life and they can't take things personal, especially if they ask you two or three times and every time you say, no, you, you don't want to create an issue that is there for a different reason than they think. So right. these are the kinds of things Again, it's like, do you own a car or not? That that has really nothing to do with the availability of a job. So, you know, really, um, particularly in large cities where there's um, there's a tremendous amount of public transit for you to get to work. Yeah, the, the other thing, too, uh, keep in mind that the applicant may volunteer uh, voluntarily give this information to you without asking. They may tell you they live with their parents. They may tell you you know, I live with my uncle, uh, or something like that. Um, but, uh, you know, what you want to be conscious of is you can't, there are certain questions you can't directly ask, uh, if they want to volunteer information about themselves, that's fine. That, you know, you can just make a note of it. And if it uh, affects the job or not, then, uh, act accordingly. Yeah. Next, then I, I've managed people in several ranges of business. 
um, in several different uh, types of jobs. And I've always held through um, all of that a, a golden rule. Uh, you criticize in private and you compliment in public. So any interview I, de I, de I dealt with, I always dealt with the, you know, the golden rule, you know, co you compliment in public. So really look at it in terms of, you know, this isn't where you've taken an employee into the office and, and you're going to constructively criticize them for their work. Um, so, you know, think of this as, you know, you're out on the floor or wherever in a workspace that you're in and you, you're going to compliment them. So deal with an interview with a, a new employee as something that's complimentary and the questions you ask as complimentary. Right. Now, other things you can't ask about uh, citizenship or national origin. Uh, you can't ask, are you a U.S. citizen? Uh, can you provide a birth certificate? What country are your parents from? What's your background? Uh, where were you born? Uh, and uh, things like that. Um, asking about other languages is fine if uh, you're a translator or if you uh, need to speak Spanish for a telephone operator or something like that. And in some states, there are exemptions to this for employees with less than 15 employees. But uh, what can you legally ask about national origin and citizenship? That's right. As Tom says, you, you, um, you, you cannot ask someone if they're a U.S. citizen. And you, you can provide, um, you can ask to, that they provide a birth certificate. Um, this is uh, because um, under the guidelines of the Social Security uh, in the United States, it is a requirement that you have a social security number. So you, they would have to provide you a social security number for you, the, the employer to pay your taxes. Um, you, you know, you, you can inquire as to, or you can't, it, it, rather, you can inquire as to where their parents are from. And uh, you can't act, um, you can't inquire as to, to their ethnic background and, uh, or, where, or where you were born. Um, or, you know, how you learn the language because you have an accent and you may recognize the accent, you know, maybe you recognize that it's, it's, uh, Iranian or Spanish or Italian. You, you, you can't inquire as to how you, they learned a second language, but you can inquire if they can read or write English, because obviously that's somewhat important in most jobs in America, um, that you're able to read and write, not just speak, but read and write. English. Yep, that would be true. So uh, we talked about arrests earlier. Uh, let's talk a little bit about convictions uh, because <laughs> that's another that's another one that's in there. Uh, don't ask questions about convictions for roles that are not security sensitive or ask about convictions that have no connection for the role they're applying for. Uh, for example, uh, we wouldn't uh, you wouldn't ask a receptionist about her speeding convictions or his speeding convictions, I should say. So Shane, what can you ask? Uh, no, you're covering what you can ask. I'm covering what you can't ask, but I'll do this for you because you got it backwards. Um, the, if, the role role. The candidate applied, the if the role of the candidate applied for is security sensitive, Tom said, then you have permission to ask about that. Of course, that, that, that only seems right. But again, uh, reference to a, a resume is always important. Uh, there's no need to to inquire about specific things on a resume in, unless it's really important. Like if they're going to deal with large sums of cash and the resume clearly provides all this uh, background information, then you can refer to the resume and say, where where did you work? I mean, this is quite impressive. And, and most resumes will have the period of time that you worked at. Um, so again, this is one of these areas that you have to be understanding that you can't be critical of. Um, and in some states, uh, you have to uh, inform the employer that you have been convicted. Some states you don't. Different states have different laws with regards to it. But generally, you don't have to. Uh, the other thing, too, is that keep in mind that uh, one of the issues that people uh, don't cover in these uh, items here is um, your background with regards to Facebook and Twitter. Um, you know, in the woke to age now, uh, people are going right to Twitter and, and Facebook to make determinations about employment. So that hasn't been legislated yet. 
And that isn't covered in our questions and answers or these uh, answers and questions that we have today. So, you know, you you need to be aware that that uh, you could uh, find yourself having a difficult time finding work, um, even if you do apply and send a resume, um, because uh, there's no guidelines whether or not uh, you should provide your Twitter uh, account or name or your Facebook uh, email address even. So these are important things that will have to be resolved, hopefully, sometime soon um, by both our governments, uh, you know, with regards to people and these sensitive issues in employment. Yeah, be uh, be conscious that uh, there's no expectation of privacy on social media. So um, uh, freedom of speech or whatever uh, does not really apply in this case. So if you put it out there. Um, you know, it could damage you in a variety of ways. So that's another thing uh, for talking to employees uh, to be careful about. Um, some other things, uh, things you can't ask about. Uh, credit. Um, this one's kind of a, uh, uh, do you have a bank account? Can't ask, do you have a bank account? Do you uh, own or rent a home? Have your wages ever been garnished? Have you ever declared bankruptcy? Those are, uh, those are some of the ones that you uh that you can't ask. So, uh, uh, there's not much, <laughs> it's probably best to just avoid that one, Shane. Well, that's right. Um, you can't ask about, uh, a bank account in the sense of direct deposit. Uh, mm. some businesses, but that's after they're hired. I, I appreciate not before. it. I, I yeah. was, uh, I was about to say that oh, some, okay. some businesses that do prefer, uh, to do direct de deposit. So if you are hired, be, be advised that, uh, you know, you, you would be able to, uh, be required to answer that question. Um, if businesses uh, don't want, you know, I mean, that may be part of uh, your employment. They may say to you, well, we only do direct deposits. So that, you know, at that point you may have to reconsider the, the job. Um, and, you know, and again, w w owning your own home or, or renting is, is not something you can, uh, inquire about only again because it's a proxy question and it can be you, you know determined that it's you know it's a reference to your background and and, and where you live and it's not an employer's uh, uh, it's not important for an employer to know that yeah. Um, yeah with regards to excuse me with regards to uh being garnished uh, it's again not really something an employer has a right to inquire about or even about the bankruptcy. But in most cases, again, your resume, uh, keep in mind, folks, uh, you are required, you know, if a person, you are required because the business asks for resume, um, one of the things they're going to require is previous uh, work. And uh, they may and, and have a right to uh, inquire as to who, who, who did you work for at uh, uh, that company? Or is there a human resource uh, department in the company? And if so, well, the phone number. Um, th they can call to inquire about previous work. And, and uh, that's why human resource departments exist, because of p potential uh, need for information for references when people uh, call to ask about a previous employee at their, at their business. So keep in mind, once again, you have that issue of uh, you know people inquiring now, if you uh, are are looking at some type of situation where employment includes uh, provision for home, you know, like housing, again, that that steps over a, a line to a certain degree uh, where the employer can discuss with you, you know, your your need for housing and and. Uh, location if that's if that becomes a, a, an issue sometimes people find that they may move from a, one city to another to get the job or to, to get a new job um you know whether you need an interim place to stay or or whether you need uh, some type of uh, a per diem or per monies provided to you to, to make that transition to, to rent or or even stay in a hotel for a period of time before you uh, plan on buying or or renting someplace. So the, it's with all these situations, these are general questions you can or can't answer, and and general questions that need to be understood. Uh, but again, it, primarily this is about small businesses in a small town, uh, with you starting a new business. And uh, <clears throat> what I'm referencing is where you're going to be because you're going to be successful. Yep, that's it. <clears throat> 
Another thing you can't ask about, of course, disabilities. Uh, this one is uh, this was certainly a, a tricky one. Um, you can't you <clears throat> are not permitted to ask. Do you have a disability? Uh, have you ever filed work workers compensation claims? Uh, have you ever suffered a workplace injury? And again, in some states, there might be an exemption for employees with less than uh, or employers rather for less than 15 uh, full time employees. That's right. And clearly, if you have uh, some type of physical disability, that, that would be apparent in the interview. If you you have crutches or, or, or God forbid, you're in a wheelchair, um, then then, of course, access uh, is is important. And uh, the employer has to explain to you that they do have access. Most uh, federally in your country and in ours, it, it's required. And a lot of states have even more requirements. Uh, states like California and, and uh, uh, Texas and even New York and Florida, larger states, have even larger requirements uh, to benefit uh, people that, have, that are handicapped. So d d disabilities are uh, a different type of a situation for people, um, especially um, when, you know, the physical ones can be dealt with in, in, some, in some way. M mental disabilities are ones that uh, become apparent uh, uh, from your appearance and, um, and uh, in some ways. Uh, but uh, in generally speaking, once again, this is something that people will or will not disclose in their uh, resume that they provide uh, because resumes still are required, you know, in, in these cases, even for small jobs uh, working in a small town. Yeah. Next, we've got uh, your first job or early work uh, that you um, that you did. Um, that would be. Uh, uh, when did you first start working, uh, for example? And um, some states prohibit questions about current salary. Uh, when did you first start working? Could be age discrimination. Uh, if you started working in 19 whatever, then they could theoretically assume you had to be over 18 to do whatever you were doing, and that could lead uh, to the uh, uh, to that uh, situation. So. That's right. And th this, th you know, this is pretty clear where education becomes important because it's uh, in most service jobs. Um, th this is not a, uh, you know, the education they want to know is, you know, have you bartended before? Have you been a waitress? Mm -hmm. Have you, you know, have you been a cocktail waitress? Can you carry a tray with, you know, eight drinks on it? Right. Th yeah. These are the kinds of things that in particular are important. Uh, most people that come out of uh, high school, uh, you know, over 65% go go to work right away. They don't go on to secondary education now. Um, and those numbers are dropping uh, drastically. Uh, not, not because it's a, a case of uh, money, really. Uh, in, a large, in a large case, uh, it's because, uh, you know, the, the more... Uh, jobs in the country available are small businesses with less than 50 people like the one you may be starting. And it, it's, they're pretty much service oriented businesses. So they, they really don't require a lot of uh, uh, education uh, as much as experience. So new, new people coming out of high school, young people are looking for experience themselves at the job they're going to do. Um, in the case of restaurants or the food industry, uh, they could start in the back, basically, not, not necessarily up front at the register dealing with money, but learning to, to, to do cooking or cleaning of some court of some kind. And, you know, that's great experience to start because the uh, service industry, particularly the restaurant industry and the bar industry, you get tips, baby, cash. You get to go home every day with cash. It's that's a nice feeling that you always have money in your pocket every day. May seem like a lot, not a lot, but uh, you know, there's always that case when you want to buy that bubble gum or, or you know, pick up that magazine and you happen to have the money to pay for it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, next, family status. We talked about a little, touched on this a little bit earlier about your address and things like that. But uh, family, uh, uh, your family uh, status, of course. Uh, can't ask, are you married? Are you single? Do you have children? Uh, ask all candidates about outside commitments, not just relationships, or it will be seen as discriminatory. So, uh, yeah, you, uh, 
yeah, if they're married uh, or single, um, really has nothing to do with the job itself. All right. That's very true. And, and it's clearly, again, one of these issues where you uh, don't want to put yourself in a difficult situation uh, where, you you know, that you, that you can be looked by the employee as someone who's uh, make, making a, you know, a, 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 a personal observation about yourself. Are, are we not going to talk about emergency contact name or employment? Uh, no. Okay. I didn't put well, it family in there, status so. is, uh, you know, uh, it's really none of the employer's job uh, to know that you're married or, or they, that you, whether you're single or even whether you have children. Um, but again, these are the kinds of things once you start a relationship with an employer after mm -hmm. you've gotten the job, at some point, these things will become more aware the longer you work. You know, they, the, people find out when you, your birthday is and, you, you know, you have the, the traditional holidays and, you know, people start talking about anniversaries. And so, the you know, these things do come to pass and uh, they are also not on your resume. So, again, keep in terms, uh, you know, have that resume next to you, have that human resource book that you have uh, with the, the, the questions you're asking uh, for the job with you and make sure that uh, in both cases, uh, you have the employee sign the resume and date it so that, you know, he authorized you to have it and sign and and date the questionnaire that, that you have in the human resource book uh, that you're asking the questions in. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, we are, uh, let's see, what do we just do? Do we do family status? Yeah. No, we haven't done family status. That's not family status. We got to do family status. financial <laughs> status. Brother. Excuse me. Financial. <laughs> financial no. status. We just did financial family. status. Let's do financial status. That was, uh, that was kind of tricky. Again, uh, do your own home, do you own a car, things like that. Um, due to relationships between poverty and some minorities, questions on this subject can be very sensitive. They could be uh, considered as uh, racial uh, situations. And um, so, yeah, you need to be careful in what people own or don't own. Um, the other thing, too, is that a lot of these uh, things uh, will be covered in the employer, uh, the applicant's um, um, resume, things like their past employment and their other jobs and things like that. That's why we skipped over those two, Shane. So, yeah, and that's right. And and a lot of and even in this case too, uh, you know, the, an employee. I mean, if for the sake of argument, I mean, uh, you know, you sign up with skip the dishes. You sort of need a car to do it. So, you know, it, again, this is one of these basic questions that uh, as Thomas pointed out. Um, is very often covered in the resume, particularly if the job that you have um, requires a car or in some cases requires for you to commute. I, you know, a lot of people have to commute quite a distance uh, uh, to get to work. And it's quite remarkable that some people will literally commute to work for an hour and home for an hour. So, you know, that's a lot. That's two hours a day plus the eight hours they work. That's 10 hours of, of 24 hours a day. Time management becomes a very big thing uh, in in working and uh, commuting to work. So that, that that becomes a big qualifier. Yeah. Well, the other thing, too, to keep in mind is, um, you know, one of the things you can ask, do you have a clean driving record? Because you may be uh, applying for a job delivering uh, something. Um, you know, you may be uh, uh, hauling water uh, to, you know, vending machines or anything like that. Uh, so, um, you know, you don't necessarily have to have a car for that, but you do have to have a clean driving record to be able to drive the company uh, vehicles around. Correct. Very important. Absolutely right. So, all right. Uh, we can ask about genetics. Uh, genetics is uh, a touchy uh, point. Uh, do you or any of your family members have a history of disorders or disease? <laughs> so you can't, you pretty much can't ask too much of anything about uh, genetic information, uh, Shane. So probably just leave it by the wayside. <laughs> so let's, well, you, so you answered both questions. Go ahead. Next one. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, there's nothing there uh, too much to do. So, uh, next one is height and weight. Uh, can't ask about height and weight unless it's a condition of the job. For example, if you're an airline stewardess, you need to fit between the seats walking up and down the aisle. 
and uh, height. Uh, height may be a disability in an airplane if you have to walk uh, slumped over. Um, I reached the I reached the top of the airplane, pretty much. Uh, <laughs> so, if I'm wearing a cowboy hat when I travel, I got to take it off uh, walking down the aisle. So, um, yeah. So there's all kinds of uh, things that uh, that relate to a height and weight. Uh, but you can't ask uh, what's your height and how much do you weigh. So um, that's kind of. <laughs> this is one of the reasons why personal interviews for small businesses and small towns are so important. Uh, larger larger corporations, they're looking for people with uh, uh, professional backgrounds or working at other places in other cities. You know, th there's so many things that are relative to how a person looks and presents themselves that they don't really see until they've gone through the first bl blush of people who have uh, required, you know, uh, filled out a request to take a job. So at, at some point, someone out, no, no matter where you live, no matter where, who you are, what kind of job you're looking at some point, you're going to have an interview with an employer um, in a small town, small situation, new company like we're talking about. Um, it's pretty obvious when you walk in the door. Uh, what your height is. And it's pretty obvious when you walk in the front door about how much you weigh. Um, the, the, the problem that you have is how you present yourself. So, you know, there's there's no mention here about it. So this is where I wanted to bring this up. Um, it's really important that, that, you know, you have good hygiene. It's important that you have good breath. It's important that you look um, like you, you know, not necessarily just cut your hair. Um, but you know, have a nice haircut and, and if you have a beard or facial hair that you've trimmed it, all these things relate to your personal, um, uh, welfare and, and how you take care of yourself. You know, I, I always laugh with my children raising him. Um, and that is, is, you know, you take care of your feet, you know, with a pedicure and you take care of your teeth with a dentist and you'll be good, you know, good to go. But uh, in interviews, you know, appearance is a lot. It's it's over 50%, um, no matter what the questions are, no matter what your resume is, and no matter what the human resource book says, because that just affects human beings. Uh, uh, human beings are affected by the appearance and personal hygiene of other human beings. So be aware of that um, and, and be cautious about how you handle that when someone sits down before you inquiring about working for you. Absolutely right. Yeah. Uh, marital status, um, uh, pretty much off limits, Shane. Um, oh yeah. You can't, um, there's, not, there's nothing in Tom's calling on this one. So you can't yeah. inquire about marriage, but of course, again, personal appearance, uh, the tr tradition is a finger, you know, a, a, a band on your, uh, wedding on, like on, on your, you know, left hand yeah. is sure. pretty, pretty much a case of, you know, you're married. Uh, yeah. Interestingly enough, some people may wear uh, a, a band not, and not be married thinking it would help them in, in a job. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, that's the, you know, you have that issue too. So you can't always assume um, some people may be divorced, but still uh, feel that they're married and, and they still wear their wedding band. So yes, it's a tradition, uh, but it's not something you can actually de depend on because you can't ask about it. And uh, it, it, it's, and it's really not, uh, 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 you know, it's, it's, it's another one of these questions that leads to the difficulty of, you know, trying to find a way of inquiring if you have other or too many personal responsibilities, like, you know, raising children. It's a very large responsibility, particularly if the woman is single. Mm -hmm. Absolutely right. Yeah. Uh, other things uh, we can't ask about military service. Um, uh, yeah, it's uh, any direct questions about discharge or the fact that you didn't serve in the military um, would be uh, off limits. But Shane, you can ask indirect questions, can't you? You can, and particularly in regards to the job that's being uh, considered. But again, this is more for large corporations. Uh, this is more for, uh, uh, you know, working for the government or a city um, or somebody that's seeking personal security. 
Um, and, you know, yes, if you have a nightclub, you might be interested in this because you're looking for a doorman. But, you know, in most cases, small business, new business, uh, this is not some, uh, you know, if it's in the resume, you know, you can compliment them and just say, gee, I noticed you've served and I thank you for your service and compliment them and go on. Yeah. Um, well, I disagree a little bit uh, because uh, experience and training, uh, what what experience or training did you receive uh, while serving that would be beneficial to the job? Um, you know, you may have been, uh, uh, you know, in my case, I was a uh, trained carpenter. So there you go, you know, uh, which would be ideal for a small construction company just starting. Which I'm sure you'd bring up to the employer that you're talking to. Yeah. Well, they're going to ask uh, you would, what, you would you know, what training or things have you had? And then. Well, that's right. That's what, yeah. you know, that, that's what I'm saying. You, you, you can't ask direct questions, but the, the, mm -hmm. the person seeking the job can certainly provide information and, and, you know, provide yeah. uh, more reason from the experience they had in the military, uh, you know, to be, to be hired. Certainly there's yeah. no question about that. Pregnancy. Nope. <laughs> Pretty much off the limits. <laughs> if you're, if you have pregnancy, are you pregnant? Or are you trying to have a family? Nope. Uh, that's, uh, off the, uh, off the grid too, pretty much. So. Well, but in, in the questions that, uh, Tom didn't talk about, which, cause I'm supposed to tell what you can't, um, the, what you can ask about, you know, which is uh, with this, one of these hidden situations is, you know, you can ask how long you, you, you plan on staying with the company. Like, are you looking for a permanent job? That's a fair question. And, you know, um, you know, uh, do you have any planned leave? In other words, uh, it's a fair question because, you know, maybe uh, not that you're planning to take pregnancy leave, but maybe, you're, you know, you've got a holiday that you'd planned and paid for. Maybe uh, you you uh, switch up with your family to go and spend time uh, taking care of one of your parents because, you know, that that's something that you do. So, yes, you can't talk specifically about pregnancy, but you can ask about, you know, are you looking for long term, you know, employment? And, uh, you know, you can ask can if you if I require for you to travel or move to another city, you know, can you can you do that? These type of questions are reasonable. And um, again, we're talking principally about a small business and a startup. So in some cases, that might be the it might be ideal. Look, if you're going to have a, a women's clothing store. Uh, you're going to have to go and travel and um, to purchase uh, clothing, uh, seasonal clothing for your store. Um, that's uh, one of the big reasons uh, women start a clothing store because they get that option and they can write it off. Nah, with COVID now, you're probably going to do a lot of that work um, online. Uh, you know, the, uh, the Couture, uh, Fran French, uh, Paris shows are starting today, but you know, they're all viral now, which is, uh, unfortunate, you know, there's only about 4,000 global purchases or of high end clothing. Um, but that, that doesn't mean that you, you couldn't try to start your own house because, uh, uh all the famous ones of the last uh, 70 years, you know, have moved on to someone else or another generation. So you know, again, you know, sm start small, work big. But uh, yeah, true. consider all these things. Yeah, absolutely right. Uh, race and color. Um, unless you're uh, asking an actor to play a part, uh, probably not. <laughs> That's correct. Yeah, they, this is just a you know it's a it's a no win situation, and yeah. you you just again it's. Uh, but we have to mention it because people will make that mistake, and you you can find yourself in serious trouble not only with the government that could be federal actions you know um on someone's uh, uh privileges and rights but you know you could have state charges brought against you and and you could have a personal problem with the employee so you know, th these aren't small issues for a new guy or a woman starting a, a small business you you, you don't want to go there well and as i say sometimes you you may win in court but it's still going to cost you for an attorney and time off and all those things so it's just best to uh, ignore those things. Mm -hmm. uh, relatives. Uh, can't ask about your relatives. Um, uh, you know, uh, 
you can't ask what is what are the names of uh, your relatives who work for our competitors uh, this does this does become discriminatory if your company has issues hiring minorities as it would look like you have preference against hiring them so what what can you ask about relatives shane well you already told everyone i don't know what you didn't yeah <clears throat> what you're not permitted to do is uh, Spe specify and no, I'm, I'm doing the not permitted you're doing the permitted i'm I, doing the I, 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 I understand um okay. but, you know what, what i'm saying is you can, you can't specify um you 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 know you can't really spe specify as to what are the names but you can inquire if uh, fa any family members to your knowledge have worked for the company but again we're talking about a small business that's a startup. <laughs> so this is irrelevant to, uh, you know, what we're, we've been dealing with really. So we, we don't need to talk about it. Well, I think we do in a small town because you need to know if there's any relatives that currently work for a competitor and, um, why, uh, and can you provide the names of your why? relatives who work for us? Why, why would you care that, that, that uh, person working for you, as a bartender has a dad working as a bartender at another bar. What, 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 why? Because you are privy to the information of your bar and could uh, communicate that information to the competitor as to how you do business. It, it, okay. Well, it, it, running a bar is pretty typical. I mean, well, I, what, I, it, it could be a construction it, company. It could be an accounting firm. could be anything. Starting off a, a software company, and you know you have, you're talking about code and things of that nature, which which is proprietary. But in, unless it's proprietary, you know th this is something you'd be very specific, wanting to know about. And uh, you know, you know what you probably could in in inquire in something with its proprietary. What that proprietary thing is, mm -hmm. as an example, code. You know, is any member of your family uh, do? or write code and, uh, you know, uh, do, you know, are, to your knowledge, are, are they working for a competitor, you know, doing code, uh, because you're right. Then that concerns, that may concern you. And that may be reason for you to not to consider someone else, uh, because you're always looking for people wanting to steal proprietary information. So yeah, that, that does become an issue. Yeah. Well, in my case, I work for uh, two uh, computing or competing print companies here in Bozeman. So I knew how both of them operated, both of them worked, how they priced, all of those things. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, moving right along. Last but not least, Shane. <laughs> What's that? Religion or creed? <laughs> Religion or creed? <laughs> well, I, I get, we've already covered this in in numerous other aspects of the of these, uh, you know, this in, interview. Uh, this just would appear pretty obvious to anyone that that's not something that you want to go. It's too personal, and and uh, you know, you 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 needn't do that. Uh, it it doesn't provide any information um, with regards to your, but you know, you know. Uh, the job that you're looking for unless right. of course, you're looking to become a pastor at a church you know yeah <laughs> obviously yeah. if you're looking to become a pastor at your church then that that probably church, makes you know sense. they're gonna say yeah. well we're yeah yeah where, where were you a pastor before and and so forth but mm -hmm. uh you know clearly creed is uh you know not not even you know i yeah that's pretty obvious yeah. so we, we not a good not a good idea yeah yeah, don't ask what denomination are you. Don't ask who your pastor is. Things like that. And uh, um, yeah. the uh, well, it wasn't the last but not least. The uh, last but not least, I guess, is uh, another one that uh, you really can't ask about: sex uh, orientation or sexual identity. You can't uh, can't ask someone uh, what gender do you identify as. Now, there can be some exceptions in some now. states with 15 or less employees. That's so. right. And and especially now after the executive order, your new president signed this last week. So uh, th that's off yeah. the table completely. It was pretty much before. Um, you mm -hmm. know, uh, uh, it's interesting because uh, one of the things that you be cognizant of in a small business is, you know, you should you should go and, and identify 
uh, with minority rights legislation, both in the state you live in and your federal government. Yeah. Um, these are kind of things that you should in your off time read about. It's just you should mm -hmm. go read the law. It's not complicated. Law is not complicated. It just takes the time to sit down and read, review and and uh, and understand mm -hmm. it. Um, there are great guidelines out there for human resource. Uh, there are great guidelines out there for questionnaires um, uh, for you to have an interview. Um, I suggest strongly that you go and 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 you know. Um, with uh, different types of uh, interviews that you may or may not need. But like there's all kinds of interviews uh, that are, are types of interviews that I checked on, like for the t any type of business, it's quite fascinating because the questions are quite different. And uh, you, you can make a determination on uh, any of these preview, you know, already prepared interviews that you can print out whether you want to ask questions or not, or you feel you shouldn't. Um, you know, uh, clearly if you're not going to use them, I wouldn't scratch them out. Um, I would actually rewrite it or, you know, draft your own, in, uh, your own, uh, interview, uh, information. You, you don't want to have something scratched out. It implies that you don't question, you know, you don't ask him, but you may have in the past. So yeah. <laughs> you want to have well, a clean sheet in that human research mm -hmm. source book on file, you know, and again, make sure, uh, that you date and the length of uh, the interview time uh, on on the uh, the interview page both parties sign it um you know uh, if someone if a third person sitting there with you which isn't a bad idea uh you may want to have a third person sitting in the interview and have them sign with you uh these are just uh, good ideas uh, to provide uh, protection for you with regards to your business and liability cuz there's just that's the big single biggest issue you need to concern yourself with employment meaning hiring people is liability because uh, we will be talking about insurance and other things in this regard um, as we move along through this process of advice of owning a small business and That's uh, right. yeah. living living to work so thank yeah. you very much it's been great yeah uh the other thing you can do certainly is um get uh, uh pay a visit to your local job service uh they can they can assist you uh with the questions uh for employees uh, spell out what you want the uh what kind of employee you're looking for uh you can have them do the pre-screening for you and send uh applicants to you that have been pre-screened by the job service and uh they will help you make out a list of questions and things like that that are legal for you to ask. And you can you can be consistent asking each employee, a potential employee, the same question. So you're not discriminating on questions or asking one person this and someone else that. And the other thing, um, once you've hired people, um, the job service can help you create an employee handbook. This is very important as to uh, how you... Uh, uh, vacation time, um, time off, uh, sick days, things like that. Um, also, uh, how you're, how you're discharged, uh, under what circumstances and, uh, how is that spelled out? Uh, do you get warnings or do you get coaching or whatever, uh, before you're terminated? So, and the employee will to these uh, conditions in the employee handbook before you hire them. So you've got a legal document they've signed that they say, uh, I'm going to adhere to these work conditions, these work hours, uh, uh, whatever, whatever is spelled out in the job. And uh, so uh, if, if the event happens that they feel they're wrongly terminated, uh, you can certainly take that to court and say, Hey, here's, here's the deal. And um, you know, the, the employee normally will not bother with a, uh, uh, a suit of any kind because uh, there's a written record that they've signed to. And um, each time you do a um, uh, employee evaluation, they would sign that as well with uh, things that you think they're doing well, things they need to improve and all of that. So that's where we are. So. That's right. The, the expression cover your ass probably came from an employer who failed to do so. So <laughs> that's keep right. Yeah. When you're, you know, hiring people because that becomes mm -hmm. the, the, the biggest soft spot 
in your business. And uh, as I said before, uh, one of your biggest liabilities. Ain't that the truth. All right. All right. Uh, let's see. Well, it gets, uh, that's pretty well going to wrap us up here, Shane. Um, let me remind you, of course, if you're watching on YouTube, hey, don't forget to subscribe. Ring the notification bell. You'll be notified whenever we have these podcasts. And like us, of course, put a like down in the uh, uh, subscription down there below. And also, uh, we're on Patreon. If you'd like to support us monetarily, we would greatly appreciate that very much. We'll put the uh, link to uh, how you can do that down below. And uh, and uh, there we are. And uh, so as uh, as we leave, uh, we'll leave you with a couple messages here. Then we'll come back and say goodbye. If you if you're new to our YouTube channel, be sure to hit the subscribe button below the video. Click the notification bell so you'll never miss another podcast. Like us and leave a comment. Tom and Shane are now on Patreon. You can become a supporter of the show for as little as $3 per month. Or if you go higher, there are some special perks only available to you. Your help keeps these small business podcasts coming. You'll find this Patreon link in the description below. Thanks for your support. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next small business podcast. All right. Say goodbye, Shane. Indeed. Thank you. Be happy. Be safe, everyone. Live in the moment. And always, always live to work. Come home happy to your family. That's the way they want to see you through the front door. All right. Hey, we thank everybody for our, your support. Thanks for watching us. And, uh, hey, we will see you on Thursday uh, with a new uh, small business topic. And uh, until then, uh, hey, if you think it there, we'll say it here. All views are welcome here. So we'll see you on Thursday.